um, you know, the ability to manage your money and know how to manage it properly. So you are able to not only give and tie, but also invest for your future and sustain, sustain your current lifestyle. 37% of those people who attend church every week, you know, those people that identify themselves as evangelical, they go to church every week, they actually don't give very much money to their church at all, guys. And that's simply because, again, like I just stated, they don't have it. So they find themselves giving their time and volunteering and things like that. And then 77% of those who tithe give, give 11 to 20% or more of their income, far more than the baseline of 10%. So looking at these numbers, guys, you have to come back to yourself. Why is this? And then I thought about the exact thing when I was working and when I could not get my paycheck Monday, from Friday to Monday. So the full power of tithing, guys, it's found it's not something that's that's found in fear it's not something that you know uh it's actually something that we get to do i'll say that rather than something that we have to do so there's definitely is some grace um in that next slide please so look at these statistics right here right and before we go over those statistics there you go. I'll give you a scripture after we go over this. So when we look at the United States, census, okay, out of 100 people guys, who started working at age 25, okay, all the way up to age 65, out of every 100 people in America, only 1% of those people will ever be considered wealthy, okay? So 4% of those 100 people, or 4 out of 100, will have enough money put away for their retirement. And then 3% will still be working. Those are your people you see at retirement age, still working at Walmart as readers and things like that. And you're like, okay, why are you here? Well, you know why they're there. They're there because they did not have enough income put away to sustain themselves, you know, during their retirement years. And then a whopping 63%, 63 out of 100 of those people are going to be dependent on social security, friends, relatives, or the church. Now, the way things are looking and going right now, I can't quite tell you guys, I don't know if Social Security is even going to be here by the time we reach retirement. You know, Richard, I, I just don't know that, you know. Um, and then 29%, 29 of the 100 of them are just going to be dead. They're not even going to be, be here, okay. And that's some other, you know, areas we have to work on, too, as a community to get that number down, too, right. Next slide. So it brings me to this scripture here, guys. Back one, right there. Proverbs 29, 18, it says, where there is no vision, um, the people perish, right? So it's simply saying, because we have no vision and the lack of, we will perish, as you can see in the numbers that I just showed you. Next slide, please. So here, guys, is a chart showing you about what you would need, okay, to have in your retirement or investment account to be able to maintain a lifestyle, your current lifestyle or a desired lifestyle at the time of retirement, okay? So the far left tells you the monthly income you need. And every time I do this presentation and I look at this number, my number changes. It just depends. Now with the current affairs and what's going on right now today, I mean, I, I, might, I can say that I would need $10,000, you know, um, monthly, a monthly income of $10,000, especially, you know, I have a young child. I want to be able to be, uh, pay for her to be able to go to school, get her college education, and also be there and have an inheritance left here for her. So with that being said, over 20 years, guys, I'm going to need $1.6 million somewhere in an investment account to be able to maintain a $10,000 a month income, okay? So you look at this chart and you decide how much is it that, you, that you're going to need in retirement and look and just see, you know, if you're there, you may be, or if you're not, how far are you from where you should be to be able to maintain retirement lifestyle, Okay. And these above sums are based on a portfolio with a 6% annualized return. Next slide. 
So okay. that's, it. that's the last slide of the presentation. Even guys, I just want to say that, you know, I think and I do believe our pastor is doing a great job, you know, teaching the word on tithing. I really, really do. But I have to ask why are only 20% of our members tithing and 4% are saving. And as I stated before, I remember where I was when I was learning about financial literacy and working and my paycheck could not pay my bills and I had nothing left over. Okay, so since that time, guys, I've worked with hundreds of people and taught, taught them how to apply a simple strategy, a simple solution that we call income shifting to help you overcome these challenges. Let me first say this, guys, that we are in a capitalistic system, if you haven't noticed by now, even with COVID and what's happening, everything seems to be for sale now. They found another way still to market to you to sell things, right? This system is 95% capitalism and no one's ever taught us how to even operate in the system. Many of us get it from school, friends, um, businesses, jobs and things like that and that's just not um gonna get it it's not formal it's not going to help us meet those goals right so the bible teaches us in hosea 4 6 that my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because thou has rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou should be no priest to me seeing thou has forgotten the law of thy god i will also forget thy children powerful 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 guys so again, in this entrepreneurship and financial literacy ministry, we want to help entrepreneurs build their business and teach the members of New Life how to apply the 10, 10 80 rule to their lives to overcome these problems, okay? The 10, 10 80 rule, guys, if you don't know, is 10%, as I said, to yourself, 10% to tithing, and 80% is what you actually should be living off of and managing your expenses. Every month, someone's gonna not get paid. It should never be you, okay? We ask each of you for your suggestions and for your prayers for the ministry. And at this time, I would like to turn the Zoom call over to my business partner. He is, let me tell you guys, he is so much fun. He knows so much of this information. He's very, very articulate, very intelligent, very smart guy. He's a man of God. He's a family man. With further ado, would you please, guys, give me a virtual hand clap for Mr. Richard Harden. <laughs> wow. Wow. Thank you so much for that, that kind introduction, Yasmin, and, and more so, thank you for taking the time to really embrace the importance of marry, marrying ministry with practical practice, Thank knowing you. that, you know, knowing that that power to get the wealth was given, was given to us by our fathers, that's in Deuteronomy. And it's, it's incumbent on us to learn what we need to know and do what we need to do based on what we learn so that we can be that biblical good man that leaves an inheritance for our children and our children's children. Now, be before I jump in, I do want to share a document with any of you that want to take notes on some of the things that I'm going to teach today. But I also want to take a few minutes, since we're a small group and you've been able to hang in with us for a while, I just wanted to make sure that we got a chance to know you by name. You didn't just see our smiling faces. So if you're in a position where you can come off mute and come on camera, tell us your name, where you're, call where you're Zooming from, because we're on Zoom now, we're not just on the phone. And what you do with your days right now, what kind of work you do for a living, and then one area of your life you'd like to change financially. Now, in my case, I'll give the example so that everybody can see that this is pretty easy to do. My name is Richard Harden. I'm actually born and raised in East Point, Georgia, right on the south side of Atlanta. And during the day, I worked in enterprise software. I'm a computer technology guy. And one area of my life that I'm focused on being able to change is having my money stay with me longer and do more work for me. Does that make sense? I had the frustration before I found some of the information I'm going to teach today of getting paid one day. And it wasn't that I got paid. It's just that all of my bills got paid. I don't know if anybody can relate to getting a whole check and having a couple hundred bucks left to make it to the next check. So I checked the check. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, who else can share? 
Jump in, jump in. Okay, shy. I'm Yasmina Siraj. I am zooming in from the highway. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've gone into a different state since we came on earlier. Right. Welcome. Thank you so much for getting on. Just look forward. Look straight ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. I'm a truck driver. I have my two-year-old son with me. I, I um, homeschool him. So it's like from being a, a truck driver to mom, like I, I don't like I don't have another life <laughs> anymore. <laughs> so, but um, I want to my, my goal is to just be more financially stable. I want to be able to come out of this truck before or by um, next year, by you know, by August before the school year begins, so that I can start his preschool home training and everything. And um, you know, I want to be able to save up, save up enough money to you know, of course, just just live off of and live comfortably, but be able to be home with my son and hopefully in his sixth or seventh grade um, year be able to All right. And yes, Nina, you broke up I've just a little bit. Go around the world for that particular year, goal of mine. And um, I don't feel like I'm going to be another way. So that is why I'm here and me in. And uh, I'm just here to be a spokesman, but to actually, you know, utilize everyday life. So I, I switched to Verizon, so I'm just going to listen to myself, but I can still hear you all. Excellent. Well, I did hear, um, again, truck driver and stay-at-home mom, except now it's an on-the-road mom, and looking to improve cash flow in particular but also to be able to potentially replace some of the income that you get on the road by being stable at home when it's time to go to pre-K. Yes, yes. Okay. I, I have to make sure I interpret the part that I heard in between that was jumbled. All right. And who's next? Got Jamisha Latida, Latida, am I pronouncing that correctly? And Pixel 3. I want to give everybody a chance to share so that I at least focus what I teach on things that people are interested in knowing. Hey. Hi, um, it's Latita. Latita, good to yeah. meet you. Um, right now I currently work as a nurse, um, which is not, uh, is essential, but it's not the highlight of my day, every day right now. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to be able to be in control of my financial stability as well as income in general. Um, like you guys said, with this situation, it's shown me that how easily anything could be taken from me because I have no control. Um, and I want to be able to uh, break some generational curses and, and start some generational wealth as well. Amen. In the right place. Amen. And thank you for your service because, um, yeah, some of my business partners, best ones, are nurses. And they work, when they say they're going to work today, they mean they're going all day. <laughs> yes. Yes. When you get off, it's, it's, yeah. it's right now, it's more mental than physical. Um, and just knowing, you know, even if you're not somebody that's going through direct impact, you're hearing about it left and right, which puts you, you know, in a place to where, um, I wouldn't necessarily say you're scared, but you you definitely are second second thinking your your position in life right now. Like you know, is this it for me? And that's where I'm at. Absolutely. Thanks again for sharing. And let's see on Pixel Three. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Hey, I can hear you. Hi, I'm Jamisia Hagabook. Um, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, um, and now I live in the Midtown area. Um, I've been staying down here about six years. I currently um, caregive for my father that has cancer for the last um, three or four uh, years. I was worked at a law firm in accounting for 16 years, and I had to stop to take care of my dad. But 
while now I am in the process of starting a non-emergency transportation um, company. I have been going around with that business and doing home in home care, which um, which that's what my end goal is is anyway. But in the process of doing that as well, I've been doing Uber and Lyft, and I guess my goal is to get to um, a place where I can get more marketing for the non-emergency non transportation business. Okay. Well, I already have my business plan. I already have my business name, all of that. It's just about getting funds to get that kicked off the way I need to. Okay. And, well, we, we should talk about that later, just in terms of level of funding that you need and sources you've looked at. Because I do know startup, uh, small business loans are kind of on hiatus for most parts of the country. But mm -hmm. I have seen some interesting alternatives. So let's make sure we follow up to have a conversation about that. All right, okay, thank you. And then last but not least. Uh, I'm Tamala Harris. Um, I am a physical therapist. Okay. Um, like Latita, I'm an essential um, worker right now. And I'm kind of not necessarily second guessing myself, but um, I'm not in the, I guess, in the fire like Latita is. I do see some um, COVID patients, but probably not as many as the nurses do. Um, and for me, it's just a matter of wanting to get um, debt free, become debt free, kind of establish a legacy for my kids and, um, you know, just build something. So that's why I'm here. Awesome. Awesome. Well, fortunately, it is the best thing about being a small group. I know there are a lot more people that were registered that didn't make it to the emergency session is we can tailor some of our conversation to things that we all have in common. And as I share today, I do. Let's see. I have a document, but as I'm thinking about it, how many of you are on computers and how many of you are on phones? Who's all on? So, um, oh. let me see. I'll share a file. Let me see if you'll be able to download it. This is just so that you can take notes on a portion of what I'm going to talk about today. And in terms of keeping more of your money and having it do more work for you, one of the things that we're going to talk about is the magic that interest plays in our lives, but specifically the process that bankers go through in maximizing our money and how we, meaning the collective we, can become our own banks and make money on our money the way the banks do. Because have you ever noticed that the bank always has the biggest building in whatever city you're in? Yeah. Do you think they built that bank with their, their money? No. no. No, they have a secret and I'm going to share it with you. The thing about sharing secrets and information is that the truth will set you free. Yes. But first, it'll make you mad. Yeah. <laughs> so, again, by way of background, Richard Harden, I did all the things they said to do, went to school, got good grades, went to college, got out there, got the job, um, started making the money. And it was, it was just like, it seemed like every time I made more money, the, it was the saying they say is the more you make, the more they take. Right. And I got to a point about four, three years ago where I was at the high point in my career, meaning I was making five times as much money as I, as I was making when I came out of college. And at the same time, I felt like I still had the same amount of money in the bank account. Now, yeah. of course, you know, marriage, kids, costs, bills, all that stuff goes in handy. But what I found was I, for all my education, for everything I learned in college, there were some things I had not been taught about money. And as Yaz and I share this process of income shifting, it will occur for you in three stages. First stage is you shift your mindset. Once you're aware of the challenges, it'll be a little bit of an aha moment, like, oh, you know what? I never thought of it that way. Once we start sharing the solutions, the individual pieces, it'll start to shift the way that you think about generating money and then in the last shift, you'll be in a position where you can change the minds and lives of people around you. That's our goal. Make sense? All right, so when you can see my screen, I'll come back and forth between sharing my screen and not sharing my screen, but when you can see it, let me know that you can. And I guess I shouldn't start in the middle. We should probably start at the beginning. Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah. All right. So again, one glaring statistic, and I, you know, as Yaz was talking about this and doing the numbers, one glaring statistic that jumped out at me was 92. That's what I get when I add 63 plus 29. 
63 plus 22, 63 plus 29 equals 92 percent of people end up at the end of all of this, meaning this, the frustration we're going through right now, 92 percent of people, most of the people you know end up dead or dead broke. So it wasn't just you. There's a flaw in the system. There's things that we're not taught about the approach to money, and it costs us not just while we're struggling through life, but in the end, when we're supposed to be relaxing, enjoying grandkids and planning futures, where we're depending on grandkids to help through the day. Does that make sense? So talk about the four challenges. If you're taking notes, write these down. The four challenges, the four things that are attacking your money without even addressing you personally. Number one is inflation. We call it the silent killer. And what inflation simply is, is the price of things going up over time, all the time, and in control of business. And especially given our current economy, it's easy to see some trends in inflation, yes? You think yeah, about it, yeah. one time, toilet paper was cheap and plentiful. You could always go to the store and count on there being some and you getting it. But you, if you'll notice, the cost of toilet paper has gone up 20% during this pandemic. Toilet paper, what's its purpose? To get flushed down the toilet. But it costs more because it's in demand. Make sense? Now, at the same time, yeah, yeah. The biggest bill in every one of our households, I don't even know where you live, is taxes. We call it the chainsaw massacre. Because as I think about the people that are on this call, most of us pay at least 30% of our income in income taxes. We get taxed for making money. Yep. And then the money that we get, we think about it, in your paycheck, there's a gross amount and a net amount. And there's a and the difference in between them usually makes most people feel gross. But then everything that you spend money on after you get that check is also taxed. If you go, if you buy something at the store, you got to pay sales tax. If you pay for your car, you got to have alarm tax. If you own a home, you got property tax. The government makes money when we make money and when we spend money. The average person, again, the first third of their money goes to taxes, but then that gets compounded because we don't have and take home pay what we expect to have, this is where most of us pick up what I call the family curse. See, a sin is something that you do, but a curse is something that's passed down to you because they didn't have it to give to us. Many of us, when we started trying to buy the things that go with the lifestyle that they said you should get, how many of you were told you should buy a home? But how many of you, when you went to buy a home, didn't have buy a home money, you had enough to put something down on a home? So if you got a home, you got a mortgage. If you got a car, you got a car note. If you got students, you got student loans. Debt takes the next third of the average person's income. Now, here's where things started ticking in for me. I started looking at my checks and where they were going and saying, you know what, you're right. And then you got to think about the nature of our capitalist economy is that big business. And I don't, you know, I don't condemn capitalists for being capitalists. I just had to condition myself to the society I was in to make sure that I made money the way that they did. Because you think about retail culture, it's designed to take the rest of the money that you have left so that at the end of a pay cycle, how many of you are just over there looking, needing for that paycheck to come in? That was me. And in my frustration, I did begin to pray. And that's probably what I should have done in the first place. But if you, you know, my brother always says, if you're, if you're in the right position, you're praying for the right thing at the right time, God will bless you. And I was blessed to find out about three solutions to the four challenges that we face. And those three solutions come together under an umbrella that we call income shifting. If you're taking notes, jot that down in your notes, put it in the chat so that you have it in your log. Income shifting are three solutions to the four challenges most working Americans face. And it goes in three phases. First stage is we increase your cash flow. Increase your cash flow. Build a business income. Build an income that you're in control of that gets taxed differently. And then three, build an investment income. Put your money in a place where your money can outwork you. Now, when I talk about cash flow, I have to be clear because I did not have that definition as a part of my education here in, at Douglas High School or at Duke University, but cash flow is a measure of time. 
Income is how many dollars you make. If you make a million dollars, you got an awesome income. But if your bills are $2 million, you don't have enough cash flow to make it through the month. But if you make $80,000 and your bills are only $40,000, you can go two months on the cash flow from the first month. Make sense? So let's talk about how these work together. So if you think about increasing cash flow and investment, building business income and investment income, the most important thing is that we build a tax strategy that gives you an advantage. As a worker, employee, self-employed business owner, we are disadvantaged in how we're taxed because you got to think about it. The average worker, if you work for somebody and they write you a check and they take taxes out, you tax 28 to 33% off the top. You never see it. They get paid before you do. But with our cash flow strategy, what we look to do is first, minimize the hit that taxes take out of your life. Two, minimize your expenses by making your bills go down. How many of you would love for your bills to be lower? Then want to minimize first and then eventually eliminate debt. We accelerate the process of eliminating debt and I'll talk about why that's important in just a minute. And then increase your credit score because that's another way to make your bills go down. Make sense? Now, at the same time, we want to convert a part of what you do in your life, whether you're in business now already or want to start one, into a business income and specifically a home-based business income. Reason number one is just tax treatment. Person in business gets taxed 18 to 25%, right? Almost half what they get taxed as an employee. So you get to be tax efficient. You get to write off a portion of your lifestyle. I'm talking about the place where you live, the phone that you talk on, the internet, the square footage of the house, part of the mortgage, part of the security system, right? It's a business expense. See, as an employee, it's only eight or nine deductions that the IRS allows, but there are 475 deductions available to business owners. And then the last part is you get to generate an additional income that you're in control of. You don't have to necessarily work any extra hours or deal with people you don't like. It's your business and you get to be the boss. Make sense? And then the last phase. So once we get you to the place where we've captured some of that cash flow back from your job, your taxes, your bills, your debts, and put it together so that we're building an investment snowball that's getting bigger and bigger so that it can do two things. Because here's a secret. Investments are taxed lower than any form of making money in America. And it was set up that way because rich people set up the country. Money making money is taxed at, ex at half the rate or less of you making money. So if you think about it, Latita, if you were an investor and Yasmina, you're a business owner and I'm just a regular employee, we all make $100,000. Think about how much of it we get to keep. I make $100,000 as employee. Wait, let me, let me look at y'all so y'all see the disappointment on my face. I make $100,000, but I only get to keep $66,000, right? And now... Yasmina, because you're a business owner, you get taxed 18% or 20%. You make $100,000, you get to keep $80,000. And the best thing about being a business owner, you get taxed on what's left after you finish doing all the things that your business has to do. You get taxed on your profits, not your income. Mm. And then Latita, you as an investor, you made $100,000, you get taxed 15% or less. You didn't have to get up and go to work. <laughs> you didn't have any employees to control, but $85,000 of your income comes back to you. And that the best thing about that 85,000, the money made the money. Wow. You didn't even do it. Which side should we be on? So let's talk about terms. So let's, as, I, as I go in, are there any questions for where I am right now? No. No questions? Okay, so how do we do it? The first thing in any education, and these are the things I tell people all the time, I only teach terminology and perspective for the things that I didn't know. So if you knew these things before I shared them with you, you're ahead of the game with me. But one of the books that I study, one of the first authors in my financial literacy education was Robert Kiyosaki and Rich Dad, Poor Dad.
And he, he said the same exact thing. Employee got a job, self-employed, you own a job. Like, I'm, I mean, as my uncles I was telling Yasmina about earlier, they're owner operators. So they each own three trucks. They drive one and they lease two, right? So some of the money that gets made in their business is becoming a business system, meaning that in addition to them, there's two other guys making money when things happen, but they all have all the maintenance costs. But the goal is to become an investor where money's at work for you. Now to understand how we do that, and by the way, his books are, you know, I don't get paid for endorsing Robert Kiyosaki, but implementing his strategies shifted my mindset, helped shift my life. How many of you have seen this document? It's called an income statement. It's okay if you haven't, I hadn't before I saw it, but having a visual of what's happening with our money will make everything else that we give you access to make a lot more sense. So if you, if you haven't seen, matter of fact, if you haven't seen it, type, I didn't know this. Just put that in the chat so that I'm looking at what I'm explaining, I go at the right speed. Let's see. Where is my chat window? All right. Didn't know it. Didn't know it. Okay, so let me go through it quickly and then we'll get back to some other things. Does that make sense? All right. So in an income statement, you got to think about your life. Even though most of us don't think of our lives as a business, the banks do. The banks think of our lives as a business and your money acts like you're a business no matter what. So there are four things when it comes to money. In the first part, your income statement at the beginning is what it says, what you think of right now. It's any source of money coming into your life. It could be your job, it could be alimony, it could be lottery winnings, whatever sources of income you have, it's just money coming in. Expenses, money going out. What's money going out? Bills, taxes, out to eat. Any place where money leaves your life, that's an expense. And then the balance sheet is where you decide what income class you're in. And there's only two things to consider. Assets are things that put money in your pocket. Right? What's an example of an asset? Well, a business that's making money is an asset. Right? If you got stocks and bonds that are putting money into your income, assets generate income and liabilities take money out of your pocket. So, and here's, here's the funny thing. The bank's balance sheet looks different than yours. See, on my balance sheet, the home that I live in is a liability. Now, why is that? Because you got to pay for it. Because it takes money out. <laughs> it takes money out of my pocket. I mean, eventually I'll own the house, but I still have to live somewhere. Now, the rental houses that I own, those are assets. But if you look at my bank's balance sheet, my home is an asset to them. It guarantees them that I'll pay them thousands of dollars a month, right? And here's the category. So it, does everybody have those three concepts? Assets, liabilities. Assets put money in your pocket. Liabilities take money out. Income is money in. Expenses is money out. If you look at the three categories of people in America, you can pick where you are. And the thing that you have to do is think about where you want to be. So on the left-hand side, far left-hand side, I know this is a little bit small. Robert Kiyosaki says that that is the cash flow of a poor person meaning all the money that they make goes out the door in expense column. They get a check, it goes to rent, it goes to food, it goes to bill, and there's little or nothing left, right? In the middle, like the picture says, is the middle class. They got a job. Because they have a job, they probably have bought a home, a car, they got some car notes, some mortgages, et cetera, those create liabilities, so they owe every time they get paid, so their liabilities get paid first, that goes out the expense column. And on the last side, that is a cash flow statement of a wealthy person. Assets are the source of their income. Their money is making them more money than they do. Now, what's the goal? Well, if you ever want to stop working, if you ever want to have that bucket of 1.6 million to live for 20 years without working again, you got to get to the place where you got enough assets that they're the income, not you. 
But what's holding us back from that? Well, let's talk about the banker secret. Now, did, were any of you able to pull up the document? If not, just let me know, just so I know that we have to go slower. You sent the link to the document? It's I said, in the yeah, chat. it's in the chat. So let's stop the share. Oh, okay, I didn't, okay, hold on. Cause I'm on my iPad, so I didn't. Tell you what, we'll email it to you after the presentation is done. Yeah, yeah, you can go ahead, don't stop, don't stop. And that way you can fill in, but here's the concept. The banks make money on a concept of interest. And the more money we spend in interest, the less of our money we own, the less work our money can do for us. Am I making sense so far? Yes. So there's a rule called the rule of 72. Write that down in your notes, the rule of 72. And there's a famous Italian philosopher that I've forgotten his name, but if I told you, I wouldn't be able to pronounce it. It would just sound like a country boy saying something in Italian. So I'm just saying, it's, it's actually a 400 year old rule. Interest has been in, in, in place that long. But he said that interest is the most powerful force in the universe. People that understand how interest works will earn it, and people that don't understand it will pay it. So what the rule of 72 simply says is that 72 divided by the interest rate is the amount of time it takes your money to double. 72, I can click that in for you, divided by oops, the interest rate is the amount of your money doubled. That, that went weird on this slide, but does everybody get the concept? Mm -hmm. So let's, so let me do, let's, let's, let's play some more fun games with numbers. So if we think about the number 29, is everybody here at least 29 years of age? <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. So hey, <laughs> right. I look younger than me. I just had to, <laughs> even if you're not. So today everybody's 29 years old and I'm giving each of you $10,000. All right, so Latita, Jamisha, and wait, who's my friend on Pixel 3? I forgot her name. You got to rename yourself in the Zoom so we'll, we won't call you Pixel 3 forever. It's Tamala. I don't even know how to do that, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> Tamala. All right, yeah. so Tamala, $10,000, age 29. Okay. And then we'll give you a 4% interest rate. Now, does everybody have a cal? Oh, if you're on your phone, that's probably your calculator. But if you took the number 72 and divided it by four, that's how fast your money would double. I'll cheat for you and let you know that if you got a 4% interest rate, your money doubles every 18 years. That means if you put $10,000 in the bank at a 4% interest rate, every 18 years, you'd have double the money you started with without investing anything else. Does that make sense? Now, let me ask you a question. Do any of you have a savings account with a 4% interest rate? No. <laughs> no. Got to invest someplace different than a regular retail bank, but we'll talk about how to get right. to those things. But with that $10,000, if at 29 you had $10,000, by the time you're 47, that's 18 years later, that 10000 would have doubled to 20000 18 years after that, that six, at 65, retirement age, your original $10,000 would be $40,000. Did you do well? That's not going to be enough. <laughs> not at all. 40, 000, yeah, you, you got to think about what it costs you to live now. $40,000 probably won't be enough to do what you needed to do, but it's more than you started with. Now, at the same time, let's see, Jamisha, you're at 6%. Now, what's 72 divided by 6 Okay, I can cheat for y'all at 12. Y'all got to get in 12 timetables. You know you can't ask millennials that. They do not know their 12 timetables. So if you were I'm 20, not a millennial. That's what I knew. <laughs> you just caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted looking for you to come to me. <laughs> but congratulations. Now. <laughs> so now here's something cool. Your interest rate is 6%. It's only 2% higher than Tamala's, right? Right. 
but your money doubles every 12 years. So at 29, you're $10,000. 12 years later at age 41, you're at $20,000, right? Age 53, eight, 12 years after that, you're at 40,000. And you finish at age 65 with $80,000. Now, what I want you to look at and think about, that's the same period of time, right? Mm. The interest rate is only 2% more, but it's double the result. Well, See, this is one of those things that I think about all the math classes that I took in engineering and computer science. I never had a money math class where they broke down what a small difference in interest rate meant over time for me. Mm. Right? But let's take it this last step with Latita. That's 12% interest, right? 72 divided by 12 is? Six. It's just the reverse of the last one. It's six. Yeah. <laughs> Doubles every six years. Now, if you think about it, from 29, 10,000, at 35, you'd have? 20,000. 20, at 41, you'd have? 40. 47, you'd have? 80. 80. 160. What's that? 320? 320. 320,000. 640. 640,000. That's a lot better. Now, again, let's think about these numbers, though. 12% interest rate, right? Over the same period of time, the difference between those is 600 thousand dollars wow here's this here's the banker secret let me let me just let you know the banker secret up front the banker secret is you don't make four percent or six percent and they don't usually make twelve percent how many of you know somebody with a credit card that interest rate is more than twelve percent i don't know anybody Oh, yeah, about 30, 29%. I know a lot of credit cards. Yeah, yeah, 29 yeah. is a popping number. Right. Yeah. And this is what happens. They take the money that we put in the bank, they pay us whatever, and it's not 4%. They pay us less than one on savings for most people, right? Yeah. And then they take yeah, about 1%, 1%, yeah. It, it's what we call them on the south side. They go out and flip your money in the street. <laughs> Right? Mm. They make the $600,000. It's a $600,000 decision because we loan them the money and they make 10 times more using the rule. So now that you know, this is what I told this is what I told you at the beginning. When you know the truth, it'll set you free. But first it'll make you mad. Because I did get I did start to ask myself, well, what things did I not know? What things did I need to adjust in my life? to do these things, to get to the place where number one, I wasn't paying, I wasn't letting the bank make this kind of money off me anymore, just period. So we got some strategies in place to become your own bank. We'll talk about those later. But at the same time, I knew that I needed to get out of debt as fast as possible, but I didn't know how to do it by myself, right? So one of the things that we did, we partnered with a company called Making Wealth Real Financial. MWR is how I say it for short. But I partnered with a team of financial experts to specifically help me in four areas. And those four areas, tax strategy, credit management, debt elimination, and wealth accumulation, right? If you think about the four areas of money that were important to me, that's where we focus. And they have a system. I'll just say up front, if you're interested in it, I'll let you know more about how they pay and those kinds of things if you're interested in generating additional income. But for $228 a month or $228, $119 a month, they've literally generated close to six figures in my life. Right? And it started in this way. I started working with our Money Max tax professionals and it turns out that the average person, here's what happens. Let me, let me come out of the screen so that we can talk about this. I'm sure that this happened for you like it happened for me. Nobody really sat me down and explained that when I started getting paid, the government would get paid first. Huh. Nor did they explain that there were so many ways to be more efficient than just trying to fill out the tax forms by myself or taking them to H&R Block. 
And it turns out that 88% of the people in America have the tax forms that they have at work filled out incorrectly, and I was one of them. Not only was I one of them, Yaz's husband was one of them. Now, Yaz, your husband is a welder by trade, right? Yeah. Tell us about how working with the money experts worked for him. So again, guys, you know, I'm 100% 1099 because I'm a business owner, but my husband does still work a job. He is a welder um, by trade, like Richard said. So, you know, he works a lot of hours and you guys know when you work a lot of hours and you tend to make more money, you're taxed even more. Um, and just to go a little bit deeper, I just want to be real transparent. Um, you know, a lot, some of this I never probably even shared on a call before, but I think it's necessary at this time. So we're a blended family. My husband was single with no kids, doing well, working in construction. He had over $25,000 in tax debt that I knew nothing about until after we were married, Okay. I was devastated because I had already had my plans, my goals, everything. And here I am now, like, oh God, I'm in business and I'm married now. My husband has this big tax bill. Well, let me just tell you guys how MWR saved us, okay? Because once he joined the business and became a part of MWR, he was able to work with those money experts okay with money max and they were able to adjust his w4 guys okay and we were able to cash flow nearly six hundred dollars per check back into his paycheck guys okay that they were taking from the irs mind you when you're single you don't have kids and you making money the government takes like so much of your money okay so needless to say now we're in a much better position we were able to um write off things and eliminate some of that twenty five thousand dollar in debt and get an affordable payment after wiping some of it out that we could afford and we closed on our very first home october of last year guys okay we've been in the house now just over what that six or seven months with the extra money, we used that money because he and I turned around and went and got two furniture accounts, each in our name, to furnish our home. We used that money and got out of debt all over again, guys, paying off four furniture accounts in 90 days, not paying no interest, and still having that extra money come in, as well as the income from the business opportunity because we share the information with others. Yeah, and, and hold on a second, yes, because there was a lot to unpack there, and I want to make sure everybody heard the impact. Now, your husband stayed in the same job. He didn't take an extra job. He just got professional help. And here's the, here's the secret. Wealthy people have experts, mm -hmm. right? We're just taught to be ashamed to ask for help. Mm -hmm. I, mean, there's a, I mean, as much as I dislike the president of the United States, it's not that he's so smart that he didn't pay income taxes. It's that he has a team of people that make sure he doesn't take the hit. Now, in your case, the hit for your husband, Yaz, was how much per paycheck? Uh, right at $600 per check. And I want to add this, you and know. And that's, that's twice a month he gets paid? No, he gets paid weekly. And I'm telling you guys. Weekly. <laughs> yes, they removed a lot of deductions for construction workers, your current president. So, like, this could not have come, I'm telling you guys, at a better time. Like, he used to could write off his uniforms, his boots, and all of that stuff. Not anymore. He had to have a business for us to be able to get out of that situation and to be awesome. able to have what we have today. And that's, that's only the beginning. That's one set of experts. Yeah that help with creating in their house, that's an extra comma with a, the number in front of the comma isn't a one. I, I can do math quick. Six times four is 24, mm -hmm. hundred shifted back. That's when we talk about an income shift. We're shifting the money from the IRS back into your home where you can use it. Cause you got to think about what the penalty was over time in your life of how long the IRS was holding your money instead of sending it to you. Now here's the second thing that happens. We start working immediately on credit for both members of a household. So if you're married, we take care of credit for you and your spouse. 
In my case, I had decent credit, but I never studied it. I'm not a credit professional. I'd been, I'd been taken advantage of. I'd had some bad deals on my credit report. But over the course of four months, my credit went from a 690, which is okay, to an 813 is where it is right now. Wow. Right? And I didn't do anything but ask them for help, send them the documentation I had, and they went to work vacuuming out some of the things that I didn't even know were on the report, but were inaccurate and were dragging it down like a boat anchor and took both sets of money. Cause that what happens, here's what's happened when your when your credit improves, by the way, the cost of money goes down. Mm-hmm. So your mortgage is cheaper, credit cards are cheaper, even insurance health. And I mean, your car and your auto and homeowners insurance are directly tied to your credit score. So my insurance for our cars, which used to be nine hundred dollars a month, is one hundred fifty. Wow, <laughs> that feels good. <laughs> and and so you take those two things because here's the goal: it's not just to have more money to spend. Now you have significant additional income to invest in different ways. Now I won't have time to go into all of our wealth max strategies today but to put your money in places where it can do things different than the traditional work retirement account. Meaning, I don't know how many of you have been in 401ks or retirement plans at work since you went to work. I'm in those and it's nothing wrong with those, by by the way, other than I can't get access to it until I'm 59 and a half. And I want to retire at 50. Not that I don't want to work ever again. I just want to have that walk away option. You know what I mean? So the, th- the combination of things, we learn things and teach things like the private reserve account where you get to act as your own banker, where you can make deposits into it and borrow from it, but have it still grow like it's still in there. Same way the bank does. Now I don't have time to explain all that tonight because I see I'm at the end of our time but there's two things I want you to consider because we've given you a lot of information. I, I admit it, I'm guilty, I'm excited about learning new things, but even more excited about teaching new things and putting people in a position to apply them and improve their lives. So at the end of a conversation like the one we've had, there's only three categories of people that ever attend this meeting with us. Third category person says, man, this is, this is eye-opening, this was helpful, but I think I'm gonna continue with the plan that I'm on. And we pray for you at the beginning and we'll keep praying for you. But if it's not for you, make sure that whatever you do, you increase your financial literacy and get expert help in doing those things. Make sense? Yeah. Uh, number two person says, I, ha- I like it. I have questions. I wanna know more, both about how the systems and the maxes work in terms of the services and how I can put it to work in my life. Like I said, it's an ongoing education process. We do have two education events coming up in the next three days that I'll, you know, we'll provide information. Make sure you email Yaz back. Tell her, I want in, I want the info. And category one is who I'm looking most for. This is somebody that's like me, that's had enough of having them being sick and tired of being sick and tired and wanting to do something different and based on doing something different, is able to teach those differences and get paid for doing it. Because the way that they pay me is unreasonable. And I love it. So with that said, let let Yaz know, each of you has her email address. Let her know which category you're in. You wanna get a consultation about how to put the matches to work, get your taxes, credit, debt, and wealth plan together. Or if you wanna do those things and have the option of making some money with us, let us know, but whatever category you're in, get the knowledge, because my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Amen. All right. With that, I'll return control of the presentation and the meeting to our hostess with the most. Y'all give it up one more time for Yaz Anderson. This is, oh, that's the virtual hands right there, virtual applause. Oh, and, and Latina Party, hey, hey. who is that cute person sleeping? <laughs> That was amazing as always, as always, Mr. Richard Harden, guys. Y'all give it back up for him. 
his delivery, I tell you guys, is always right on point. He's so relatable. I want to just thank him for um, presenting tonight. And thank you all for your time. And this worked out, you know, lovely. Even though in the beginning, you know, the enemy tried to stop us. We had some difficulty, but we got on here and we were able to provide you guys with the information that you need. Again, thank you. Have a blessed night. Stay safe out there. And remember, we'll be right back here next week, Thursday at 7 p.m. And be sure to um, invite some guests. And I look forward to hearing from you guys to know what category you are in. Before we sign off, any questions for myself or Richard? No. All right. All minds are clear. Thank you all. God bless you. Have a good night. Thank you. Good too. night. You're welcome.